Well, if it's not front here, so then please. Guys, uh, those who are not talking, please uh, go on mute and turn off their cameras.
और जब तक अनम्यूट मत करना उनको जब आधे घंटा मत करना ठीक है अनम्यूट Hi everyone. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Just technology, guys. Yes. Okay. So I think uh, let's wait for one or two more minutes. Okay, and then we'll start the introduction of GTM. All right. So all right, so let's start now. So first of all, welcome everyone to our F5 GTM course. I am Asif from Skill Inspiration Academy. So a quick introduction about myself. Uh, so I have total 15 years of experience around training and development. So right now I am providing training on F5 LTM, GTM, ASM, APM, and Windows and Ansible uh, Terraform and other stuff like DevOps things. And uh, so this is uh, basically, uh, you know, an introduction course or class for F5 GTM, okay, which is now termed as F5 DNS. Okay, so before that, I would like to give you a, one second, let me share my screen. There you go. Just acknowledge guys, because I'm not seeing anybody is speaking anything, so. Okay, so are you able to see my screen, guys? Hello, guys. Am I audible? Hello, Vedit, you there? 
yes so actually yeah i've started the recording and yeah so i can see a few hands are up so yeah please tell me ritesh praveen amit any queries hello guys so if you don't have any queries please uh, lower your hands okay so this is our this is our uh, website skill inspirational academy nets.com so here you can find all the information regarding the gtm course the course outline the fees and the enrollment process and other stuff okay so you can you know like go through this you can find some videos over here you can find our you know like uh, course requirements you know like the prerequisites the key features related to our various courses okay and uh, also you can you know like contact us uh, you know regarding any of the available training on the contact list or on this phone numbers right so apart from that if you have any queries i will share a, you know the link or a slide at the end of this you know introduction where you can find all the details okay so any queries all right then so in terms of the you know like the introduction of f5 dns or gtm okay so we are going to cover this thing this is our course outline okay in a nutshell so if you are able to see my screen so this is basically 6 to 7 weekends of a course right approximately 26 hour or 28 hours right and the training mode will be online and we will only having classes on weekends saturday sunday times will differ but most probably after uh, in indian time it will be afternoon like after 1 pm okay so no weekdays classes it will be totally weekend classes and online okay and uh, this is our course outline so what we will cover so as a prerequisite for gtm uh, you should have a basic understanding of tcp ip on the networking okay and if you know dns as well a little bit of you know like uh, what is a legacy dns like windows and linux then that would be much easier for you there's nothing uh, you know like uh, you need to know like cisco or like you know uh, or what you say like fortinet or other kind of stuff or any sp vendor specific knowledge is not required for learning this course okay so basically uh, we have you know like we have divided the whole course into 10 segments or 10 chapters you can say first we will see how to set up the big ip okay second like the introduction of the dns and the big ip basically what's the difference between uh, you know like a legacy dns or dns server and the gtm okay so we will cover that apart from that the features like of f5 dns which is like how we can accelerate a dns resolution which f5 gtm is capable of okay and we will cover each topic each child topics from each chapter then again like how we can you know like implement a intelligent dns dns resolution with the help of f5 gtm okay and again the ldns probes other stuff how we can you know like load balance the dns queries okay how we can monitor dns you know resources how to check the configuration file how to check logs and you know like interpret the logs and notifications and then few advanced topics like dns security and how, dns 64 and like you know how to configure dns two different dns across the data center in active active and then we will provide also provide preparation for interview and question so basically like we will provide a lifetime support for uh, you know like uh, any kind of help if you need if you enroll with us then you will get lifetime support online support for interview preparation and the troubleshooting if you have any questions so far guys and they will ask after the session 30 minutes uh, so i am muted you them all okay so great you can carry forward and we can have after 30 minutes sure with it all right then so okay after this so let me share you the you know like how our lab will be uh, you know like uh, set up so this is our you know like uh, what is a lab set up for 
entire course right so in this we will have like you know basically a configure like site a which is you can you know like term as dc1 and site b you can term it as a dc2 all right so basically if you are aware of your production environment there are basically two data centers one is dc1 and dc2 and we can keep like gtm in each data center right so these are switches so you can ignore it uh, you know like for this particular course but uh, just for the representation purpose and again in each data center we have gtm along with ltms okay so this is ltms right so you can have like you know a pair of ltms ltm1 and ltm2 locally and same here in the dc2 ltm1 and ltm2 which which are basically going to you know like uh, associated with gtms in both the data center and these gtms will be in sync active active they are not in uh, they will not be uh, you know like basically into a active or standby so in production we basically uh, you know like uh, implement or deploy gtm in active active mode okay that i will explain later okay uh, how and why we uh, you know like choose active active why not active uh, uh, no standby okay so this will be our lab set up a kind of a lab topology we will follow in, uh, throughout the course okay and uh, along with that you know uh, we will have you know like something like this you know like we have some linux servers okay here at as to this particular switches okay linux servers which will be your basically you know like backend servers or the pool members for your ltm pool and we can make them as a dns like legacy dns or standard dns for the purpose of you know like labs and i will show you how to you know make a linux server uh, you know a dns server alone and how we can transfer you know like dns files or jones from linux server to gtm and vice versa okay so this will be our lab topology and uh, for the lab you know like inquiry if you want to avail labs and if you don't want to avail labs you can you know like uh, consult with it after enrolling yourself if you want lab we can proceed accordingly if you don't want lab we will proceed you know in a different way then okay so now you know after this you know like have, having said that we will be covering you know like this particular you know like slide decks okay which will basically having everything okay right from the introduction how to set up the big ip gtm and then what's the architecture of big ip it can apply to both ltm and gtm so i'll explain that okay what are all the physical ports and how it looks like then uh, will you know like continue with our initial setup right and after that uh, we will go to the dns stuff so it's basically this is the slide deck which we will get at uh, at the end of this course okay once you enroll with us and we will be covering this 249th uh, you know like uh, page deck if, through our you know like gtm course okay so it basically covers everything so it will be provided to you if you need that okay so uh, let me go to the whiteboard again and uh, have some you know like technical stuff started bear with me one second okay so first of all uh, why we need gtm okay so why gtm is different uh, than other you know like uh, dns servers right so first of all let me do, uh, make a comparison here so this is our gtm okay call up and this is our you know like legacy dns okay so i'm starting with the legacy dns so 
So right now, whenever you are doing any kind of, you know, like resolution or making a DNS query, if you are not using GTM, it will be handled by your legacy DNS, be it Windows DNS or a Linux DNS or any other DNS apart from GTM. So in legacy DNS, I'm taking example of the, you know, like Windows DNS. So basically, you know, it has only one, you know, like uh, round uh, you know, load balancing mechanism, which is known as round robin. Okay. Means suppose you are accessing www.facebook.com. Okay. And on your legacy DNS, you have created few records like I'll ex explain everything. Okay. Like what is record and what kinds of records we are having on a DNS server. So suppose you are having like, you know, Facebook is pointing to this IP 1.1.1.1 and one more IP is there 2.2.2.2. .2 right. So in legacy DNS, if you're not using and you have this facebook.com created on your legacy DNS, then this IP and this IP will resolve that DNS queries. So whenever a client or user will access, try accessing this facebook.com, they will get an IP from these two. And in legacy DNS, we only have one mechanism, which is round robin. First query will be resolved by this IP. Second query will resolve by this IP and so on. But in GTM, we have many load balancing mechanism available. Okay, like, you know, round robin, okay then ratio okay then ga global availability then we have topologies okay and there are many more right so if you look here so we can achieve you know like uh, dns uh, load balancing you know like in a different way as compared to the legacy dns because in legacy dns we only have round robin mechanism all the queries will be resolve in a round robin fashion okay but in gtm you can have you know like so many you know like uh, lb method or mechanism which you can configure okay now second comparison i would like to make is that it is you know like intelligent dns okay whereas legacy dns has no intelligence has no intelligence so when I say intelligence means, you know, like uh, based on the queries and the configuration of your, you know, like DN, uh, DNS records, F5 is able to handle so many things. Okay, it will, uh, so in round robin, taking this example again, in round robin, you know, like scenario, suppose uh, Facebook is pointing to these two IPs. So if this IP goes down, okay, if, uh, it will, you know, like keep on resolving to the down IP. But in this case, in GTM case, if it is down, it will never give, uh, you know, like end user this IP. It will never resolve the DNS query to down IP. Okay. So this is why uh, GTM is intelligent. There are more to it. Okay. I'm just taking a simple example. So legacy DNS is kind of a dumb. Okay. It will uh, not take, you know, like monitoring. It will not basically monitor or probe the uh, DNS, you know, like records, whether they are down or not, but you can probe here. So this is another point that, uh, you know, like uh, DNS probing or monitoring here, no monitoring. Means like if it's down, it's down, okay, and uh, GTM will not going to give that IP to end user or client. But in legacy DNS, it will not have a mechanism to probe or monitor, uh, you know, like that particular IP or record. Again, there are more to it, so taking one more. So in GTM, we can have a feature no less topology, LB load balancing, which we don't here, don't have here. In no topology based load balancing means like so suppose we are from india and uh, we want to access one you know like uh, what to say a site which is basically a us site and uh, that particular site on our application owner has configured something that okay only indian user will access this site even though they are in the us 
all other rest of the you know like uh, world will access some other you know like you know or get some other ip okay like suppose let me change the color of my pen just a second so i'm saying this suppose this is www.us.com is a fqd on our site okay so it is it has you know like suppose 10.10.10.10.1 and 20.20.20.2 right so suppose uh, this is a us based company hosting a web application in its in its us data center suppose there are only one data center as of now in the us okay so if you want that okay this particular ip will be given to the rest of the world right rest of the world and this particular ip should be going to all indian users or like indian users or you can say asian users okay so this we can achieve easily with the gtm but not with the dns legacy dns okay so there, these are you know like you know few examples or a comparison i have you know like showing here there are so many things which you will learn as you go you know like down the course so with it i would say like if you can unmute them sir uh, uh, all of them okay for a moment if they have any question uh, that would be great with it you there hello with it am i audible to you yes yes go ahead yeah could you please unmute everyone if they sure. have any question that sure, would be sure. great if they can ask at this mm, hello sir sure yeah, they can go ahead and ask mm, uh, actually i want to know dc1 and dc2 is connected with mpls or it's connected with the internet Uh, hi asif uh, my name is pavan i have one doubt so you are hello we can't hear anything hello 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 yeah am i audible yeah hi asif oh, yeah yeah so if that if that makes sense like as or i was not audible to you uh, hi sir actually i want to know dc1 and dc2 is connected by mpls cloud or it is connected by the internet it can see so they it can totally depend on your deployment scenario okay so your uh, data centers are basically physically one second uh, one second am i audible yeah yeah so it's totally depend on your de deployment right so if you are using an mpls or dedicated circuit then they can connect it to a okay connected with a mpls if you are using an dedicated internet uh, lease line or whatever you can you know like use that one if you are using a dark fiber it is totally possible on your you know like deployment but here what i'm saying is that our dc1 and dc2 in terms of gtms right so once we have a connectivity there and we establish a i query what we call that will come in later in the course with the help of i query you can make them in active active and it can use your you know existing infra back end infra be it mpls be it internet be it dark fiber whatever okay so what okay. if we if we have both the connection like isp and mpls then which yeah. we have to prefer first 
so uh, i would say mpls is any time better because it's a dedicated right so that's again right. that's a networking thing but uh, uh, mpls is a best solution any time okay right. right thank you thank you welcome yeah so next anyone yeah hi asif this is pavan yeah pavan hi uh, so uh, gtm you are referring to dns right even this one support a link load balancer we can send outbound traffic using the gtm right right so see uh, link load uh, balancing is different like suppose uh, you are let me go to whiteboard because uh, suppose we have a three or four internet connections terminated terminated on our gtm box mm -hmm. apart from dns feature how we can uh, make sure that the traffic will be routed through gtm no come again suppose we have a gtm box in our data center and i have okay. a four internet connections terminated and i want to give the priority from the isp1 all my ftp traffic and uh, some of the tra uh, traffic like a web and applications through isp2 and like this the, yeah re rest of the traffic right uh, through isp3 yeah. so i want to do this kind of uh, okay so people. for that we have you know a dedicated module which is lc okay or a link controller what we call okay okay so if you explore this one you will get this so if you if you have multiple isp okay you use link controller why to use gtm as i told you gtm is nothing but a intelligent dns correct so all things related to dns or dns queries will be served by gtm gtm queries you can load balance based on the geo location on the cunt, on the basis of basis of country yeah. on your yeah. area like and ip addresses but if you want to monitor the isp or segregate the bandwidth okay for you know like based on the application so link control is a better you know like uh, product for you okay uh, but the gtm has this future right because uh, which feature uh, link controller we can do the link controller by profile by configuring the profiling on the uh, gtm appliance so that's what i'm saying so you can configure yeah. link controller with the help, uh, help of the profile right saying. but it's related to the dns only not it will not going to monitor your bandwidth so for that if you used uh, want to uh, make use of the bandwidth monitoring that's what i'm saying link controller is the best i have recently deployed uh, okay for one of our you know like client so uh, we have gtm so two gtms are there serving different uh, same contents right but we want to you know like uh, configure something that dc1 gtm will get more traffic so configure link controller first and then gtm so gtm is dedicated to the dns you will get to know it more right uh, once we will get, uh, dig deeper but as of now okay just think of it as a dns all the dns queries okay yeah, so that, suppose uh, sorry, for uh, uh, sorry for interrupting asif yeah 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 go ahead actually we uh, even we replaced our dc recently with a gtm with a latest 2600 series model Where okay is, uh, every model now it is coming with a base dns right if you base yeah. DNS, you have to go go for it there is no option you cannot say that i don't want dns feature but even uh, new box you need to go for the base license uh but uh, we are not using for the dns purpose we are using for the link controller okay so, so we, my we, friend uh, let me tell you one thing so this is suppose uh, okay our 2600 box right yeah you have provision it plugged into the you know like network correct right. so you have licensed it so before that you have to uh, you know take the license okay and that license may contain ltm also gtm right. also right. apm also asm also link controller also enterprise manager and so on other stuff right correct so so what what you are saying a, a default dns it will no it will not do the uh, you know dns load balancing it will not act as a dns not a gtm not at all okay for that you have to use this gtm module so even if you have a license and you have not provisioned it okay you will never make use of the gtm features right i suppose you are using ltm only you have provision ltm your box will behave like an ltm right if you are not using ltm you have provision gtm only your box will behave like a gtm and if you are not you know like uh, going to use gtm and you have provision link controller it will act as a link controller and so other uh, you know like models 
so it's all about the licensing and the provisioning it may come with the you know like uh, uh, default dns but that is not going to behave as a dns or a gtm that will simply for every device be it cisco router uh, polo alto or or you know like any vendor device that has a gtm configuration that's exactly gtm has but it is not going to or like big ip has but it's not going to load balance the dns queries uh, if i make sense right so if you have just log into this device right, and see uh, go to your provisioning okay in the system menu go to provisioning okay it's a last uh, you know option in the fly out menu uh, from the gui and see uh, which all the modules are activated or provisioned you will get to know it okay so yeah. right yeah thank you hope that helps so who is going to take the classes as if uh, if we uh, enroll for the class uh, me so how about the labs uh, will you provide any lab scenarios or any yeah, yeah 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 so see let me show you this so these are our course these, these are our topics okay our course outline basically so if you look here uh, so first we will set up like okay how to you know set up the big ip in the lab okay then do the initial setup configuration like you know the management ip and the vlans and self ips right and here itself we will do that provisioning and licensing okay and again uh, you know like i will uh, teach you about the dns legacy dns not the f5 for few you know like hours okay so so that you can uh, you know make a comparison and understand how gtm is uh, really different from the dns okay and the, for these uh, you know like topics we have you know like lab manual so if you want to check this you can go to our website this is our website okay just go through the outline if you have any queries regarding the lab or any topic you can directly reach out to us no problem okay and certainly without lab it will be of no use make sense pavan yeah that's fine Thank and this you. is just an introduction guys so i may be skipping few things just because uh, looking at the time constraint okay so i will just touch a little bit of portion so at that this, this would be more easier for you to ask question right if you have any kind of doubt so how many of you are you know like uh, have any prior experience with the f5 product so i think like you know everybody has that that's why they are here so if nobody knows how ltm works then gtm would be different for them or difficult for them so i am assuming that whoever is here right now is having some kind of f5 knowledge at least f5 ltm be it basic level intermediate or expert doesn't matter but at least they know like how ltm works or what is ltm if anybody is not aware of uh, you know ltm or f5 please raise your hand and uh, you know like um, ask their question right now yeah actually um, i don't have your voice is very slow sri ram uh, yeah, it's very low yeah, uh, i just want to uh, enroll in ltm and palo alto i don't have any knowledge about on fi and palo alto i have only experience with cisco products uh, okay with it can you uh, please uh, you know like uh, help sri ram with the you know ltm and the palo alto uh, you know like course because he has no prior so he should I, i i think he should enroll for our ltm course first right yes. otherwise yeah, gtm yeah, will yeah. not make any sense you can just should... contact us if you can just show them about that contact details yeah so one second guys so let me do that first so this is our one second you can take a screenshot of this you know like uh, slide if you want so this is our contact details uh, for any queries it's a uh, free of charge to ask queries okay so you can ask as much as query after this you know like introduction okay so just write down the emails and the contact number so with it will help you with the uh, you know like your queries yeah the contact number that you are showing in the slide is with you or someone else it's a with it okay then i will contact with him regarding okay. about how to enroll the fi and if you have any queries you can write to you know like this gmail my id is this with it id so both are fine so you can just copy both the emails whenever you are making a query 
Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, the uh, is this the uh, uh, lab can be practiced in GNS three or is some other uh, tool is there too? So practice? what we have seen is that uh, F five labs are very uh, you know like very very much optimized or uh, well optimized in EVNG or cloud. Okay. So if you have EVNG on your laptop, we will help you set up the lab. Okay. Okay. In GNS3, uh, you may face some, uh, uh, you know, you may face some issue in terms of the logistics. But in EVNG, uh, we have tested and we have imparted training and you know, like labs to, you know, other attendees. So that's our tested one. So EVNG is the best uh, fit for our uh, big IP labs. So okay, I hope so everybody has taken this screenshot. Yeah, yeah, I I taken that screenshot. Okay, good. yeah, tell me. Uh, uh, of what about for Palo Alto? It just can be practiced in GNS3 or. So for Palo Alto uh, again, like you can check with you know. So I'm not handling Palo Alto, so but uh, team will help you with that. Okay, but okay. Yeah. understood. Yeah, guys. So. Anyone else? Go ahead, guys. So it's an introduction. Uh, okay, and uh, if you have any queries, like uh, whom so, whom should you know, like learn this particular course or not, please feel free to ask. We have, you know, more than one and a half hour in hand. So, uh, Asif, okay. hello. Yeah. Hi, Asif. Hi, Mohammed. Yeah, uh, one by one. So, Pravin, can you lower down your hand? Who is speaking? I'm not getting. Yeah, this okay. is uh, Mohammed here. Uh, one by one, guys. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Mohammed, go ahead. So, uh, Asif, I come from a Citrix background. So, um, what I know so far with the load balancing is that Citrix yeah. has got a single code base. It's, it doesn't differentiate like if you're using a GSLB or a WAF or, or LTM. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. The, it, to compare to that, um, I see that we are using on the FX side different modules. If you don't provision a module, you cannot use those features. Right. In this case, uh, between two DCs, if you want to run GTA or a DNS, okay, the um, FR DNS. Is it mm -hmm. is it a uh, good idea to provision the GTM on the same, um, um, let's say, same uh, VCMP guest, which is running ASM, LTM, and um, any other module along with that, or we have to install a GTM in a separate guest? Okay, that's a very good question. I'm glad you asked this. So let me show you something here. Okay, so you are saying this is our DC1. Okay, and this is our DC2. And suppose in our DC1, we have a F5 box, right? So this F5 box, as I you know said earlier, that can provision with any, you know, like modules like LTM, GTM, ASM, and so on, correct? Now, suppose this F5 is, you know, uh, dedicatedly provisioned for GTM, right? Similarly, in DC2, we have another F5 which is dedicatedly provisioned for GTM, right? So you can establish the I query. Like in Citrix, we use, you know, like MAP. Okay. Yeah. MED, sorry, MED. So, you know, like similarly, we can use I query over here to synchronize. So your F5 can, from my experience, and I'm a designer, so I would always recommend, you know, like having GTM as a dedicated box. Okay, separate it from other uh, modules. But I've also seen that this is also configured with, the, you know, like other modules like LTM and ASM. This is very much common. Okay. Mm -hmm. LTM and yeah, sorry for the bad handwriting, guys. Okay. So again, as I told you, dedicated is the dedicated. GTM is very much preferred and ideal is ideal. Okay. And preferred. Right. But it's totally feasible to have other modules on a same box. Hope that makes sense. Uh, yes, that, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty much okay. But the point here is that uh, yeah. in case where these days, the data centers are not um, one single fabric. It's like you slice them into multiple different uh, virtualized uh, Logic yeah. right? so in that case, if you are using a F5 box there, uh, mm -hmm. and if you are going to use GTM, would you dedicate one specific GTM for each of those uh, idealized or uh, logicalized containers, or you dedicate one GTM for each of those containers? 
Okay, no, I would say like only one for all uh, all other containers, right? So because see, uh, this is uh, so this particular box, if it's a GTM, right? And in your uh, data center, okay. One more thing before answering that thing, GTM can be there are many platforms or right of F five, right? So first is appliance. Okay, first is appliance. Second is VE virtual edition. Third is your hypervisor, I would say like VCMPs, okay. Fourth is your cloud, okay. And now as you are seeing that, uh, you know, those uh, Kubernetes and also container based also, okay. Mm -hmm. So they go hand in hand, right? So, but if you segregate, so these are the platform types for everything like LTM, GTM, ASN and APM. So appliance is a physical thing. As we know that it can be one RU or uh, more than one RU. V is simply you are running uh, ESXi and you have created a, you know, a, what do you say, a VM and install or configure GTM or provision GTM. VCMP is again, it's a hypervisor or it's a hypervisor or chassis based, right? So uh, here you can, you know, like slice it down. Uh, so you have like, you know, virtual. Uh, course available, you can, uh, you know, create many F5 LTM, ZTM, ASM on this VCMP or chassis based models, right? And in cloud, you know that in AWS and Azure, we can create EC2 instances of, you know, a GTM or anything. And in containers, again, like, you know, we have now Terraform, sorry, Docker, okay. And then now KTS, which is Kubernetes, KTS, sorry. Right, and etc. So uh, there are many options available. So if you are, I'm not getting your environment exactly. So, but again, this is a top layer layer thing, right? Layer seven thing. Okay. So it depends on your environment where it best fit. Because if you are configuring GTM, it's the first uh, entry point for all the queries for application or the DNS. Make sense, uh, Mohammed? Right. right. So even if you select, it, yeah. Yeah, this is him from Skill Institute Academy. Can you just complete one topic on the G team after that you can take all the questions? I'm totally fine. So I'm just take, take giving you, an, you know, like what kind of platforms we are doing. So platform, if that makes sense, because it applies to every uh, everything, right? All, all the modules. So, you know, like, so guys, I would say, uh, so this is introduction class. That's right. So. If you can ask your like, you know, environment specific question at the end of this class, that would be, I can extend myself, you know, like for another 30 years. No, uh, we can have and, one, uh, one topic, Mr. Uh, Asif, which is just uh, one topic, please. Of, so yeah, that sure. We, so All let's right. discuss what, what is GTM and you can discuss. Correct. So, right. so I can, more. yeah, I can take, you know, like these queries, uh, you know, like account specific or like, you know, client specific at the later. Or, the, or at the end, okay. But right. yeah, this is uh, totally, you know, feasible for, uh, you know, like uh, all the, uh, you know, like modules. So if this makes sense to everyone, that we have five types of platform, or you can say four types of platform, physical, uh, virtual, JC-based, cloud-based and container-based. Okay. Uh, yeah, hi there, uh, I'm Oman. I have one uh, question, just doubt, uh, not yeah, related yeah, to any like, technical. You up so that you can join later. Yeah, otherwise you... All right, hello? Yeah, just chat now, please. Yeah, just uh, put your non-technical question in chat. So, all right. Chat is disabled. You can just take up to 30 minutes. Okay. So now, you know, like uh, from this, you know, like we have seen the comparison. There are so many things. And let me show you one more thing. So since it's an introduction, so I will take a little bit of everything. Not much. Okay, so if you look here, like we have talked about the comparison, like we talked about the platforms, okay, how we can, you know, like uh, basically deploy F5 GTM, right? Now, let's talk about the DNS, okay, records. So there are so many records, 
uh, we are aware of, right? So few of them are like here. So A record, okay. Quad A records, okay. Third is C name record or alias record. Okay, then we have like NS record or name server record. Then we have like PTR record. Okay, then we have MX record. Then we have like, you know, SRV record and many more. Okay, and many more. So, but these are, you know, like, uh, you know, like the most common and important records. So, talking about this, what do you mean by a record or what are records? Records are basically, you know, like a DNS entries which we make. Okay. And how many types of DNS entries we make or records we make? These are the types. So, let me take an example. So, www.facebook.com. Okay. So on DNS, it's just a simple DNS. It could be anything like F5 or DNS. I'm just talking about the records. It's not specific to any uh, particular device or technology or platform. So www.facebook.com on DNS have a record like this, 10.10.10.1. Okay. So what is this? Anyone? Real quick? All right, so this is a record we have created. It's a resource record, I would say. Okay, and this is of type A. It's a, A means address record. Okay, so whenever you, uh, you know, like uh, resolving anything or accessing anything, be it in your mobile uh, device or a laptop or anywhere, uh, suppose we are typing facebook.com or google.com, that is a FQD and a user, friendly name this is fqdn okay fully qualified domain name okay but behind the scene there is an ip address to it okay on dns somewhere be it you know external dns or isp dns or internal dns so on your dns we have to have these records without these records this is of no use right so if you are you know, like binding one IP address to any application uh, URL or FQDN or IPv4 IP, we are creating what? A record. Make sense? So for quad records, so similarly like, you know, uh, like A record, so this is suppose FE colon, you know, like eight zero colon zero zero colon whatever. So a record a records are uh, nothing but it's just a IPv6 address record, right? So if you are using IPv6 addressing in your uh, you know like uh, environment, then you can create a record in or quad a record in your D, uh, in your DNS basically. So if you, somebody asks you what is the difference between A and quad A records, so A record is for the IPv4 and quad A record is for IPv6. That's it. Okay. Make sense? C name record. Okay. Sometimes you have seen that if you have typed this facebook.com, okay, you may see uh, you may see that okay, this has been redirected to fb.com, right? So CNAME and alias, it's self-explanatory that, okay, you, either you can type this in your uh, URL, uh, sorry, browser or this, okay. They will both resolve to the very same A record or resource records, okay. So CNAME and alias is nothing but a alias to each other, right? So suppose my name is Asif, my second name is Iqbal, then you can call me by anything, right? So suppose your pet name and official name, Right. So if somebody is calling with your pet name, you will also respond. If somebody is calling with your official name, you will also respond. Right. Make sense, guys. So C name and alias records are basically anything. So even if uh, suppose this is my domain, www.facebook.com, uh, I want to, you know, create a C name that like this, asif.com for this one. Means so if you type asif.com, you will be reaching a facebook.com. Or if you are, uh, you know vice versa basically so if you access facebook.com in turns you have a cnm or alias so 
at your convenience you can use whatever cname or alias you want for your application or a domain makes sense now ns record is basically a name server record this is very important but uh, i will go in deeper when we will see you know like uh, what is a in live classes when we will see you know how to configure a name server what is name server but as of now i would say name server is basically the server is the server record server record where we have you know like uh, resource records created right so suppose i have a you know like a server a linux server or a, which i am using as a dns and i have ip of 100.100.1.1 .1. right so i have to create a ns record like this ns type uh, you know like internet okay and then i have to provide the host name of the you know that particular server so ns record is basically i would say it is basically a record to identify where your dns records are created so this ip is basically pointing to your dns server let me change the color okay ptr ptr is basically you know like uh, as i told you here that this is ipv4 right facebook.com will resolve to this ip because we have an a record so what if you don't know the uh, you know like it's very rare but what if you don't know the name right but you know the ip so if you uh, resolve or type 10.10.10.1 it will take you to the facebook.com okay so ptr is basically a reverse record type okay so if you don't uh, you know create a reverse record that's fine but if you have one you can uh, you know like do a reverse engineering kind of thing and uh, during troubleshooting it's very handy so if you know the ip you can resolve it to the fqdn or domain if you know the uh, you know like the domain then you can uh, resolve to ip with the help of a record and mx record i will talk later this is for mail exchange okay and this is for service records which is kind of a advanced topic but we will see, uh, check later so yeah so i'll take question for few minutes on this topic if anyone has any question sure let me unmute all right you guys can unmute Uh, Asif, could you brief once again uh, the difference between server record and MX record? Hello, Asif. Hello, yeah, go ahead. Hello. Uh, yeah, Asif, could you brief, uh, I mean, uh, tell the uh, pointer record and MX record difference once again? Pointer record. So yeah, uh, pointer record is basically uh, see my domain is asif.com, right? Dub dub dot. This is my website dot com and uh, having a record like this. Suppose twenty dot twenty dot twenty dot one. So uh, I have created a record. Correct. That's why this is an address record. So if I create PTR record, okay. So PTR record is basically like I have to create same like this twenty dot. Sorry. 20.20.20.1 with www.asif.com right so if you don't have a ptr record you will not uh, resolve uh, through ip address right so it's kind of a reverse thing or a reverse record type okay to a a record if you know the name it if you do an ns lookup it will get, give you an ip address that way you will get to know okay this is the ip address i am resolving to but if you know the ip address and want to check what is the domain for that you have to have a ptr record or a reverse record type right yeah. just a, you know like a reverse thing with the ip here you are going from name to ip here you are going from ip to name if that helps yeah okay thanks and what right. about and mx record yeah mx record is quite a uh, you know like advanced talk but let me give you a brief one so mx is basically for mail exchange 
Okay, so everyone, uh, I believe everyone is using their official, uh, you know, like uh, Outlook on their mobile phone, correct? Or from where? Most of them. If not, then you must be using your web OA, right? Outlook. So basically, uh, I am, suppose I'm using Gmail and you are using ABC, you are working in abc.com company, right? So if I am sending you email from my Gmail ID, so how, uh, you know, like internet, how DNS will get to know that, okay, how to uh, send this particular uh, email to abc.com domain or the recipient. So for that, you have to create mail exchange records. Okay, it will, con uh, you know, like have your, uh, you know, like uh, uh, exchange server, IPs, okay, and few other settings also. So mail exchange are basically used for exchanging mails from one domain to a different domain. So suppose I'm working in like, suppose IBM and you are working in like Infosys, right? So there has to be mail exchange. So if I'm sending you my from my uh, IBM ID, uh, email to infosys.com domain, then there has to be a mail exchange record published into the ISP level. That's why, that's why, uh, if you don't have MX record created, your email will be dropped out somewhere in the internet. Make sense? Hello? Hi, yeah, thank you. Um, Welcome. Uh, Anyone else? Uh, hi, Asif, Praveen here. Yeah, Praveen. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I mean, see, for external records, say for example, anything can be in the internet, it's external domain, right? So if I'm trying to access the external, how exactly this DNS query finds out this external IP in the domain? Uh, come again, can you repeat? No, no, I am sitting on XYZ domain and I'm trying to access anything on the internet. That's external, external domain, right? Mm -hmm. So how this uh, DNS query uh, will get the information? Okay, so, okay guys, so a new topic, uh, you know, it's not, I'm, I'm not going to explain, uh, you know, like uh, two things, like his uh, question also and a new thing. So D GTM, DNS, or beat anything, okay? So uh, how basically, you know, like DNS query flows and resolves. So I'm starting, this is very important and easy. Try to understand and I'll explain it again in the live classes, but uh, let me give you an example. So this is a client, okay? Okay. And you are trying to access abc.com, okay? be it in your internal or external, doesn't matter, just you are accessing it. So when you open your browser, okay, you are typing this, right? abc.com, correct? Yeah. So what will happen first? Your browser is nothing but a client. You can uh, think of it as a client, okay? Because you are typing there and it will take your query to the internet or XYZ, right? So when you type abc.com on browser, browser will two, two, three things. First, it will check, you know, like browser, cache, okay? Second, it will check, browser cache means, so we have seen that uh, histories or the caches, whenever we access something, it will get cached so that you, when you other time access it, it will appear in your search bar, correct? Yeah. So it will try to see whether abc.com has already been resolved by any user or not. Okay. Okay. You can go and mute. Uh, otherwise, uh, okay. When you have question, you can ask. Okay. Now, second thing it will uh, check is OS cache. OS cache is your operating system cache. So suppose you are using. Uh, I'm using Mac right now, and somebody is using Windows, right? So it will check the OS cache. Okay, that okay in the operating system also has a cache, right? So it will check there whether it has any record or not. Third thing, it will check host file. So many of you are aware of this host file, right? In uh, ETC uh, system, Windows 32, you get a host file. If you have, uh, you know, like uh, manually entered uh, or created one host file entry, then it will see uh, there whether you have any entry or not for abc.com. So these three things it will check first, first, second, and three, third, okay. 
So suppose this is the first time you are accessing it. So it doesn't have anything in the browser cache or in the OS cache, right? Or the host file. Now what? It will send traffic, browser will send traffic to the LDNS. Okay. So LDNS is a local DNS. So when you open your like IP settings, right from your Windows or you know, like Mac or, or Linux box, you will see that you will see your IP address, your subnet mask, your, uh, you know, like uh, what is a gateway. And in below, you have seen, you know, like DNS servers, like preferred or alternate DNS servers, correct? So uh, most of us have seen that, okay, now personal or home laptop, we use 8.8.8 .8 as a DNS or 4.4.4.4, right? So if client is accessing this and didn't get any answer from you know these three places, it will send query to this particular IP. It can be your GTM IP also. It can be your Linux server IP also. But here I'm just taking example as a 8.8.8. .8 .8. Okay, it is a, any DNS. It's your external DNS, suppose. Okay, ISP. All right. Now. Uh, it will uh, send a query to the LDNS. So when browser is sending any queries, DNS queries to the LDNS, that query is known as recursive query. Okay, this is very important guys and it's easy, try to understand. So you are typing something and you didn't get any answer from these three places, it is going to your LDNS and that query is termed as recursive query. Okay, let me change the color now. Red is good. Okay, so this is termed as recursive queries. Okay, now fine. So LDS is uh, now, uh, you know, like try to check there. Okay, do I have, you know, like anything for abc.com or not? Okay, so it will check it's, you know, like entire zone file or the DNS records. Okay, uh, abc.com, any IP or not? Okay, it don't have any IP, right? So it will check, okay, fine, I don't have any abc.com. So now LDNS will you know, send this request after checking through its own, you know, like zone files and other stuff, it will send request to the root server. Now, just pause here. So root server, so let me draw you uh, here one thing. So you have seen that dub, dub, dub dot uh, Facebook. Just for a moment, guys, just be with me. So you only type this much. Have you ever typed a dot at the end? No, I, I mean, nobody has done that, right? But it's vis invisible there. So every FQD and every URL you have ever typed, okay, has an implicit dot at the end, which is called root hint or root okay so if i have to pass this dns3 so it will look like something like this uh, it's a root from right then we have com right then we have facebook then we have our host whatever right so it will pass it in this way it will check root first then it will go to com server then it will go to facebook if it's there and this is the host or dub, 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 or global server. Okay, so it's a DNS tree, basically DNS tree. DNS, uh, this is what we call DNS tree traversal. Okay, it will traverse down the DNS tree to find an answer, right? So that's why I've told you, so in our example, abc.com, there is a dot at the end. So let me delete this. Okay, so now abc.com has a dot appended here, right? So LDNS will check what the dot or the root server. It will send query to the root server. Root server uh, will check, okay, fine. Do I have answer to this? And this queries from LDNS to the root server will be termed as iterative queries. 
Okay, so from client to the LDNS, this is the only request or the query which is recursive. Most of, and rest of the queries are will be iterative. Okay, so it will ask LDNS will ask the root. Okay, do you have abc.com IP or anything? Root will check its file. Okay, I don't have, but I know the com. Okay, take this IP. Okay, it will give the dot com server. IP, okay, anything, IP could be anything, A dot B dot C dot whatever. Now LDNS will do what? LDNS will send a query to the com server, okay, or dot com server, right? Dot com server will check, okay, fine, do I have abc.com? It will say, okay, I don't have abc.com with me, but I know where abc, so go to abc, or this is a host, I would say. Right, or ABC server, it will give this habit 1.1.1.100. Okay, now client will directly connect to this IP 1.1.1, which is abc.com. And this abc.com has this, uh, you know, like record, something like this. abc.com has something like this. Like any IP, like you have configured 10.10.100, .10 whatever. Right, now if you look here, uh, this is okay. this will be returned to the LDNS and LDNS will give it to the uh, you know like client and now client will directly connect to the abc.com and these process this process is within the microsecond so here it seems like it will take this much time but it's very fast you will never get to know like these things has happened in the back end so I hope that makes sense guys uh, yes, Joseph, yeah. And the root server, it, this is not on prem, right? This is somewhere posted on. Yeah, server. so, okay, yeah, so there are. On... Hello? Yeah, yeah. Those who are not speaking, please Black go on mute. Those who are not speaking, please go on mute, guys. I'm repeating. Yeah, I okay. put, put that person on mute, Asif. Thanks, please. Thanks, thanks, guys. So, yeah, so root servers, right? So there are. 13 root servers in the world, okay, right now. And only 13. And you can have, you know, 13, when I say 13 means, you know, like it's, uh, if you Google it, you will see that it started from A or it's something like this, like F dot, you know, like then the name servers, F, G, E, so on. So we have only 13 root servers, okay. And uh, which is responsible, uh, it's basically a root hint, and responsible for everything. You know, like the top level domain there, I will explain uh, this also, Top, what are top level domain and uh, what are second level domain. So all top level uh, top level domain and second level domain are here. So whenever you are uh, publishing something uh, or like, you know, creating your application, you are going to reserve a domain for it, right? So you may get domain like uh, this.com, .in, .gov, right? dot co dot uk whatever right country wise uh, and you know like a uh, entity wise so these information are pre configured or like you know uh, uh, root server team will work in back end okay so they are responsible for maintaining all tld and uh, sld on the root servers so there are 13 servers you, uh, you uh, in the world right now who is responsible for you know like all the dns queries right from root till the host Okay. Yeah, sure, Asif. Thank you so much. Yeah. Right. So on that note, let me, any other question? Let me show you one real uh, quick uh, thing. One question. Yeah. yeah. From LDNS to .com server query type will be changed. I mean, I, I iterative query you told, right? Will the okay. query that uh, name is there different or uh, same iterative okay. query? Okay. No, LDNS. LDNS will send query to like, you know, root. Okay, this dot. Then uh, root will send it to uh, again. Oh, my bad, one second. LDNS will send, uh, you know, like answer back to the LDNS that go to com. Okay, now LDNS will send traffic to the com. Okay. Com will send, okay, go to ABC. Right. Now LDNS will again send a query to ABC, which is their final, uh, you know, like resolution. And ABC will give an IP, okay, this is my IP. Give it to the, you know, end user. Now LDNS will hand it over to the client, okay.
ab sorry abc.com and then the ip address now the first query from between the client and lgs as i told you is recursive it's only recursive query in the entire process right and rest of them they are like you know first second not this one's the second okay uh, this is third so all these queries are iterative and self explanatory if you look here they, there are so many iterations like right root is saying okay i don't know just but i know about the com go to com and ask them right or ask him so ld is sending it to com com said okay i uh, i know abc i'm not sure about the whole but go to abc and abc is the final and you have seen that there are so many big urls at fqdl so down the line so every dot separated things are basically represented our domain okay except the uh, last one the abc which is a host right my name could be a host but again this is a server or the host on which that record is there so you know queries between client and dns are recursive queries queries between ldns and the other you know like servers uh, till the final you know like server are called iterative queries okay so once you know like uh, uh, lns uh, has provided this query to the uh, sorry answer to the abc client will directly connect to the abc right and th uh, that's why i've told you now you have the ip address uh, browser will cache it okay in the browser cache os can cache it and if you have created host file with that then fine but browser is the main thing where it cast this answer so that next time uh, it should not go from all this uh, you know like dns resolution process make sense yeah thank you welcome all right so maybe just the last one where does the gtm will sit like it will be okay uh, great okay so uh, ldn is uh, gtm could be here also okay and uh, so if you just remove the root or uh, no just keep root okay so down the line suppose abc i have created abc record on gtm so here also right so ldns you can configure we have lab for it we can configure gtm as ldns okay and created all the records there direct resolution but if you have G, uh, but if your gtm is here like at this level okay or externally somewhere or internally somewhere you can replace this particular box with the gtm also okay so gtm is configured as ldns and a dedicated authoritative dns make sense yeah thanks uh, ask one one quick query yeah uh, uh, you explained clearly about a straightforward dns for name resolution yeah in, uh, now let's say in, in case where you are going to click a shortened url from one uh, browser okay Usually okay. we see it like bit dot uh, lie slash or some number there, and that is going to um, ask for a different URL, which may be Microsoft dot com. In mm -hmm. that case, how is the um, query happening from the client to the LDNs to the GTM? So as I told you, like you know, like suppose you are saying that dub dub dot Microsoft dot com, okay, and you are saying there are some numbers like this question mark the number, right? No, no, the URL would look like a bit dot lie slash some number. Once you click that, it goes to Microsoft.com. Okay, so uh, okay, okay, okay. So these are basically uh, uh, redirections. Okay, so the bit slash something. Uh, so you're talking about like uh, in uh, like whenever you're opening a WhatsApp chat or uh, you know Telegram web chat, you mm -hmm. may see like t dot me and something like that, right? Exactly. Yeah, and most of yeah. The so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. so basically that those numbers and this particular keywords are mapped okay so if you uh, you know like if you uh, know like uh, taking the live classes i will show you there are some serial uh, numbers okay or records like soa records okay soa records start of authority so those kind of things and uh, are there okay without that it won't happen and this dot t dot me and this short urls are basically a redirection thing okay they are re getting redirected at the back end right so if you are clicking this t.me slash some number you are opening a, a telegram you know uh, web chat right yeah 
so this is a basically a url a redirection we say url redirection okay or there is one more thing which is termed as url rewrite okay so again it's an advanced topic but yeah everything's happen you know like at the back ends uh, no magic nothing <laughs> okay 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 as it's uh, what version we are going to cover in this training because uh, uh... in the fi portal i can see the exam 302 is covering with the 12.1 okay so the version you are saying so uh, again like you know last time uh, we have used 11 so one more thing guys so if you are able to complete this course uh, you will be you know like uh, almost trained for the 302 examination which is f5 gtm dns specialist okay so if you look at the blueprint and compare our uh, you know like outline you will find all the topics in here okay and in fact more than that so if you are able to complete the, our course you will be easily you know uh, completing your or clearing your uh, so we are covering the version 11 or version 12.1 so uh, we will i would say like uh, right now we have you know like version 16 rolled out okay the latest one so i would take some stable one so that we can show you like you know the other commands from the older version and the newer version so i would take you know 13 version or 14 in the lab so it's totally okay. up to you like uh, so okay. uh, you know like uh, uh, concept wise there will be no change but uh, you know like menu option wise you will find differences in the different yeah, that's what i am okay. asking because uh, in right. the real exam i face some difficulty uh, while oh. facing the the L, uh, ltm specialist exam 302 okay. not okay. ltm one the other 301. one 301 yeah 301a and 301b yeah because uh, the 301a a and b is uh, the exam is covered with 11.5 series but i attend right. I, i attend the training with the 14 series so that the, the yeah. commands and the gui uh, the graphics output everything is changed so i face right. some difficulties while while facing uh, i totally get it when you ask the question because the menu or concept wise every will remain the same but it's only the graphics or the menu option uh, which are here and there that's it Right. Okay, yes, yeah. So, uh, yeah. if you look at the blueprint, it's 12 dot something for the GTM specialist. So, we will take G2, uh, you know, like uh, 12 dot one. But there is not a major difference in terms of GTM options uh, between 12 and 13. So, any any you know like uh, version would be good. Okay. Oh, sir. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yep. So guys so we are about to uh, you know like uh, we have uh, like you know 40 more minutes in hand so i would say like you know covering topics uh, would be you know like uh, take more time so ask your question now uh, with it uh, i think we should take questions now okay yeah yeah please. and uh, you know like accordingly you know like ask guys to you know you know uh, you know enroll for the session if they want okay uh hi as if praveen here so once uh, <laughs> once we enroll for this class so you guys will be giving a image that can be run on evnd so we can run we can practice all the contents which is mentioned in your blueprint yeah we will provide you the image and also uh, f5 images are easily downloadable from downloads.f5.com okay so uh, i would urge that whosoever is joining this course a uh, kindly create uh, you know like um, a what you, a profile or an account on the f5.com uh, okay and uh, during the session i will explain you how to get a you know uh, image downloaded and uh, any future uh, any limitations uh... with the image we have to buy no no image line. you can download any you know like you no know, uh, so it's very it's like common for all the platforms and where but there are are few things like as i've told you earlier so there it will be v image you have to in, uh, you know download uh, ovf or ova file okay, okay. or uh, iso practice right? right so yeah yeah and i'll explain that before you know like uh, getting into that so i'll explain everything Yeah, okay okay so and uh, this uh, gtm is capable of running dhcp services along with G dns or it's only for uh, no it's a uh, dns as of now no okay. dns so for that if you want to use you should go for info blocks i would say that's a very good thing but again not as good as gtm in terms of dns yeah, okay okay got it thank you 
Thanks. Mm. So, Ashif? Yeah. Uh, you are showing some record types in DNS. Yeah. Right? Right. You showing all how to create these kind of records? Yes, sir. I will show you how to create these records on our GTM and on the legacy or like Linux DNS server. I will go out of the line for a few, you know, like classes to just show you how we can create a Linux DNS, Linux server as a DNS server. So okay. that will be a, a added thing or extra thing, but you, I believe that you should know it. And then only you will able to make the comparison and uh, other things. For the lab, so I, uh, how much GB of memory we required? So uh, on laptop, I would say like 18 is bare minimum. Uh, so uh, sorry, eight is bare minimum, but if you have 16, that's a great. But uh, if you're having eight GB on four GB also, you can run, but again, like depends on the hardware, right? Whether your hardware is capable of performing it or not, but eight is very much recommended and 16 is best. Okay, thank you. Welcome. So as if this is only related to DNS or you're going to cover other modules like in a GTM, uh, like a controller, right? Because I'm- uh, No, sir, this is related to GTM. Okay, uh, because see, uh, GTM is, uh, you know, like you have seen that we have so many topics to cover, right? So in, uh, in a nutshell, like a GTM is altogether a different set of, you know, like a course. But if we have, we have like LTM, ASM, APM. So there are other courses which we are running. Okay. And if you want to learn that, uh, that's a, de a dedicated one then. I want to look, I'm looking for a LTM with a link controller at a van part. So which one you recommend, uh, recommend uh, me to enroll the course? So LTM with the uh, van part. Uh, yeah, van part because uh, DNS uh, mostly it's suitable for the Windows administrator, uh, but network administrator, how how much it is going to help, I'm not sure. Uh, that's where because I'm into network domain. Uh, uh, so in network domain, so you you are working on LTM. Uh, we have GTM and uh, LTM both. LTM. You have GTM. So you are managing it like you are doing the administration of it. Yes. I do configurations and everything. Configuration, right. So uh, now, since you know LTM, GTM, then uh, you are an, a, I, would, I would say like you are an ADC guy also, not a network specific guy. It's all about like whether you're like, you know, uh, you know, ISP links are terminated, not only, uh, not directly on the GTM or LTM box, it will be on your code switches, right? Or the C devices, right? Yeah, correct. And then it should come to the, you know, what do you say? GTM. Uh, GTM via some downstream switches and also again that is subject to the investigation and uh, link controller is a dedicated module right i'll say the link don't worry I, for you i'll say the link but i would say gtm and ltm uh, works so if you don't know ltm gtm is useless okay i have an idea about ltm how it works you know, how it works so LTM. okay GTM, so, but uh, I'm looking for a somewhat in-depth knowledge and troubleshooting skill set to understand the GTM with a link load balancer because we are using a box GTM as a link load balancer. We are not using the DNS feature. That is what uh, actually I'm looking for the somewhat in-depth concepts. Uh, GTM as a link load balancer, but in yeah. this particular, yes. okay, I got it. That maybe if you are not yeah, uh, going to discuss here, you can share your number so that maybe I can yeah, yeah, we can have it uh, offline then. Okay, one to no, one. Not really sure. I don't want to waste others time. Yeah, exactly. That's very kind of you. Uh, so you I, have my email ID uh, or, you know, are you looking at the screen? Uh, this is our website. With it, can you, uh, you know, share the, you know, like contact details as well? I stored his number. Uh, I can yeah. reach out with it or I can reach out to you. So whom to reach? So you can reach out to with it. Uh, we'll have a, you know, conference call. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Then I will Thank reach you. out to with it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yep, guys. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yes. I I want to have. I want to know. Has a person who never work with the F F F five. So, what is the better advice you can give me? Uh, from which uh, level I need to start? I don't know anything about F five. So, okay. If I don't want to make to be confused in the future, what mm -hmm. I need to learn for the beginning. Exactly. So I would suggest that uh, LTM is the best, you know, like course for you. Okay. So, you know, like all other modules are somehow dependent on the LTM. Okay. So I 
think you should start from the LTM first, then GTM, then ASM and APM, whatever you choose, right? But uh, without LTM, uh, you will certainly face a problem. So if you don't know anything so, about uh, the uh, LTM, yeah. yeah, go ahead. One uh, more is, uh, has uh, the, the person you uh, ask has a network uh, ne network IT network engineer. The, uh, what is uh, the field exactly I need to learn? Because uh, has another person say maybe there are some uh, uh, part of GTM. It is only for uh, admin admin system. I don't know Windows uh, administrator. So I'm not a Windows administrator. So if I want to be focused on only IT or networking, what is the after LTM, what I need to learn? Okay, exactly. so uh, so to everyone, like see, F5 is a niche skill. Okay, it's very hot skill right now. Uh, okay, in the market. So if you know only F5 LTM or GTM, uh, I can bet you that you get a job. And that's a very good job. Apart from that, so if you are, you have just started your career, right, you have to know about the networking. Okay, so like basic networking, at least complete CompTIA, you know, like network uh, courses. Okay, basic network courses. Because if you don't want to go into the routing switching or the Cisco thing, you can stick to F5. But again, basic N plus kind of knowledge you need. Okay, so if you are aware of that, you know, the courses, N plus, A plus, you know, like CompTIA courses, I think you should go for that one first, then go for, you know, like, and just, and then pick your, you know, like interest accordingly. Like if you want to go for Cisco, if you want to go for a security or Apollo, or if you want to go for F5 Altair. So I know Cisco also, I know security Apollo Alto also, I know F5 also, and Citrix as well. So, but when I have started, I have, you know, like started with the basic concept of networking. Okay, because it's an underlying principle or the, uh, you know, like uh, what is that? It's a base for everything, all the networking, you know, like skills. So if you don't know what is subnets, what are IPs, what, oh, what are VLANs, and what are, you know, like, you know, what is it? A basic routing, you know, like to, uh, what is the protocols, then certainly th uh, there would be a problem for, you know, for you to understand any networking or like any skill, IT skills concepts, right? So I would say just start from the there itself, okay? And uh, we provide those training as well, like you know, basic networking, Cisco and other stuff. So you can reach out to with it for more help, okay? So I would say so guys, you can. If if you want to reach out to us, just note down these numbers, okay? Which is visible in my screen. Yeah. So don't panic. It's very easy technology because until unless you are not doing it, it's very tough. So I would say like, as I said to everyone that if you want to really go ahead, just get started. Okay. So if you sit on and think that, okay, it's a tough, I, I don't know, I will not get this. So everyone can has, have the same kind of, you know, like uh, uh, mindset at the beginning. But the moment you start doing it, you will find it easy. Okay, so anything else, guys? Any other question in terms of GTM or other things? Real quick. Uh, uh, hi, uh, Asif. Uh, just want to compare with the InfoBlock DPC and the GTM. How? Uh, what is the benefits uh, uh, get uh, more value from the GTM than DPC? Uh, uh, your voice is very low. I'm barely able to hear you. Uh, I want to check uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, InfoBlock DTC versus uh, GTM. Okay. So, see, uh, DDI, it's uh, InfoBlock DDI solution. So, it's a uh, DSCP, DNS, and uh, IPAM. So, GTM is uh, not doing IPAM, GTM not doing DSCP, but GTM is, uh, you know, like 100 times better than InfoBlock's uh, DNS. Okay. So, if you really want to, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, like configure something or like deploy something in terms of DNS, I would say go for the uh, 5 GTM. InfoPlus is good with the DSCP and the IPAM and also with the DNS, but it is still, uh, you know, like not uh, what you say, a market leader in terms of the, uh, you know, like GTM or the DNS. Okay. It's still under, you know, like a challenger or the, you know, like, 
uh, I would say it's in the challenger quadrant. So F5 GTM is best solution for any kind of DNS, uh, you know, like solution uh, problems. And also it's a very niche and hot skill as of now, because I take interviews, I uh, like hire guys for c companies and uh, I know how much they are desperate to look for a F5 guy. Okay, and we barely find it. As if a one doubt actually, I have seen yeah. some setups actually where they are using a GTM and uh, info blocks. Uh, they create a VIP on the GTM level and they do forwarding to the info blocks. Yeah. Is there any specific yeah, they, no, no, they, depends. Like again, depends on your uh, infrastructure. So if you want uh, GTM to uh, serve content or resolve, you know, like DNS queries for a specific domain, you can configure your F5 as a authoritative or in a delegation mode. And okay. all other queries will be resolved by the info blocks or other DNS. That is totally possible. And you can configure the vice versa also. All qu queries by the GTM and few queries or few domain uh, resolution with the uh, info blocks, you can achieve that also. So you can, it's not like that you, if you're using GTM, you cannot use info blocks. You can mix it, but again, depends on your requirement. What's your purpose? So suppose you are having GT, uh, GT, so you are deploying GTM. It's a new GTM you're deploying and you have a legacy DNS server or it's Windows or Linux. So it has like thousands of records created and uh, you are, you know, like uh, uh, wondering how I, you know, transfer all the records to the GTM. You can easily do it with the joint transfer, which is known as G DNS Express, which will, which we will see in the lab. Okay. So again, you can, you know, configure your infra based on your, you know, like requirement. So you can, uh, there are a few deployment modes that GTM can be authoritative, GTM can be inline screening, GTM can be in, uh, you know, delegation mode. So there are a few modes which we will discuss later. Okay, thank you. All right. Anything else, guys? Hi, uh, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So I understand that uh, we'll be working on labs as you teach along each uh, concept. Mm -hmm. So we'll be working on configuring those uh, uh, modules or aspects. But apart from that, uh, would you be able to provide um, any architectural or implementation scenarios? Yeah, so we will discuss, like we uh, certainly we will discuss the live scenarios. Okay, so what I have deployed it for the clients, I will explain. So what's in your, uh, you know, like uh, environment, you if you want to understand that thing, you can, you know, like just give us a, a you know, like a overview, I will exp explain that thing. So we will certainly discuss the live uh, scenarios. Okay. Okay. Is that yeah, something sure. that we can provide like a list uh, that we can use to implement on our own, uh, you know, for design on our own? So obviously, so like uh, once you are, uh, you know, like performing the labs, you will get the lab manuals, right? But uh, again, so all the, uh, or I would say like each and every client's environment or deployments are a little bit different than others, right? But I'll help you understand how you can identify in which mode your GTM is uh, provisioned or configured, right? What it is doing, okay? And how it is handling the traffic, right? So. Mm -hmm. So there will be a lab manual provided to you, you know, while you're doing the lab. But the, again, that's a lab manual. Production is totally different than a lab, correct? But with, right. once you are able to do the lab, you will get to know, okay, my, diff, my environment is like this, right? So you, you will be easily able to compare it with the one which we will discuss. Right, what I'm trying to get at is, you know, I'm trying to uh, get the most- give us some documentation. Uh, most out of your experience, you know, what you have seen in the, in exactly. your, your experience. Uh, so whatever scenarios that you have faced uh, with the clients, customers, if you can yeah. impart those, that, that'd be- Yeah, everything. obviously. So I, we will cover, you know, like uh, life scenarios. Okay, that's part of uh -huh. the curriculum. Uh, don't uh, worry about that. So I, may, I have faced so many issues uh, while uh, I was deploying, right? So I will explain those things, how I have mitigated, what things I have done, right? 
to mitigate it. So I'll certainly explain. That'd be great. Thank you. Thanks. Hello. Hi. Hi. My name is uh, Gurma. I am from Ethiopia. Hi, Gurma. Uh, uh, you welcome. Uh, uh, I am uh, looking forward to take the uh, Danish uh, specialist. Okay. In the coming next uh, three months. All right. And is, is there any official guide? Okay. So again, so uh, there are. Uh, I would say, like, if, if you are enrolling yourself for our course, uh, as I said earlier, you will be able to clear your GTM specialist exam three or two. Okay. okay. Uh, we will be providing you this, you know, slide deck uh, in PDF format. Okay, this is 249, uh, you know, like pages long. So I would say like there is no official guide as of from the F5 itself. If you look on the internet, you won't find anything, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's all about the practice, but in this curriculum, we have designed everything in like, you know, uh, Likewise into the, uh, what we have in the blueprint. So a 5302 blueprint. So I think you will be able to, you know, like uh, take most out of it and you can appear for the exams. And if you are, you know, like a sticking, uh, sticking somewhere, uh, you know, like uh, in terms of a concept, uh, we can help you solve that. Okay. How I can get a uh, different kind of materials from your site or your uh, Okay. So, so you can contact my team. Okay, the okay. number uh, which was flashing earlier are here also. So you can just check with them. They'll help okay. you with the, the details. Okay. okay. Yeah, Thank but yeah, best. I would say like certainly you will be able to clear your uh, crack your exam F five three zero two. So okay. it's practice. Uh, I would say there's an, uh, you, if you are appearing with three zero two, you must have seen that there are no official guide for F fives anywhere. Not only for GTM but for yeah. APM ASM. So they yeah, are very yeah. strict with this thing. So you have to learn, you have to earn. That's it. Okay. Uh, we have deployed uh, on F5 uh, in our uh, company. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I am taking uh, the exam uh, 101 and uh, 201. 201. Previously, yeah. And uh, currently I'm looking to take 301. Oh, and, right. uh, I, uh, there is no enough uh, materials online. material yeah, so, yeah exactly yeah uh, yeah when we compare uh, the other uh, two, 201 and uh, 101 it's insufficient uh, for three right zero. okay so you. guys will... yeah so i'm just uh, you know like explaining the f5 certification tracks like whosoever is uh, you know like uh, willing to appear for a f5 exam can look at this screen so first of all, uh, they have F5101, which is application delivery, uh, delivery fundamental you, you, exam. You can just share the screen. We are not able to see it. Okay. Let me know once it's visible. Is it visible? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, guys, uh, I'm just explaining the F5 certification tracks because I have seen so many questions from the certification point of view. So, F5 has basically, you know, like five certification tracks. So, first is 101, okay, which is application delivery fundamentals. Okay. So, this is the basic. You have to uh, clear this to appear for rest of the exam. And after this, we have 201. And 202. 201 is your like TMOS administration. Okay. And two is for sales guides, or it's a sales exam. So you can you can choose not to appear for this, but it's for sales guys. Sales exam, right? Third is 301A, 301B, then we have 302, 303, 304. So 301 A and B is basically LTM space list. Special list. Okay, 302 is GTM space list. 302 is basically ASM space list. And 304 is your APM space list. 
okay and then we have you know like uh, four is like 401 and 402 this is basically cts oh no, no not ctr cta it's a uh, certified you know like uh, architect for 301a and three, uh, 401 a, 401 and 402 okay so it's a cloud cloud and security exam okay security exam so you have to clear all this okay before appearing for 401 and they are also you know like developing some exam of 500 level okay but uh, as of now they don't have so this is a certificate track so this is prerequisite for all the exam 3 101 and uh, 202 201 so once you clear 101 and 201 you can appear for any exam from uh, this track if you don't want to appear for ltm you can appear for 302 or 303 or 304 if you want to appear for 400 exam you have to clear all this right but here you have a option that you can go for modular specific exam once you clear 101 and 201 hope that makes sense guys okay thank you for a brief explanation and uh, i am one uh, to thank uh, for a skilled inspiration in uh, youtube yeah there are okay. a lot of uh, videos thank you yeah. thank you very much yeah. so we will assist you in the exam so once you enroll we will certainly assist you that's not okay. an issue okay. thanks okay. Thank you. anyone else we are close to the end of session and do uh, provide your feedbacks guys okay because it's an introduction uh, and uh, it's more of an interactive that we wanted to keep and uh, know you how you want to learn and what you have uh, you know like in your skill set right now so please go ahead with your questions we have last few minutes uh asik praveen here so we can go straight away take uh, 301 exams ltm no so you have to as i told you you have to clear 101 is a prerequisite for all the exams and yes. 101 and then 201 so once you are clear 101 and 201 then you can appear for any of the 300 exams Right, so once you uh, complete 201, then only you are eligible for appearing for 302 or 300 series exam. If you want to appear for 400 exam, 400 series exam, you have to clear all of the 300 exams. Okay. But you provide training for 101 also? 101 is very, you know, like fundamentals. It's, as I told you, it's a more of a network. So if you enroll for our LTM course, uh, it will be get covered. Uh, okay. 101 and 201 will get covered in the LTM course. So you both. cover both the three own A and B and LTM course, right? So yeah, so three, see here also, if you are learning for LTM, okay, so we will, uh, you will be able to get 101, 201, also 301 A and B. Okay. okay. And 301 A and B are more, uh, uh, 301 B are more, uh, you know, like inclined toward, you know, troubleshooting. So again, real life scenarios and other stuff uh, will be asked in the exam. So it's all about the practice and troubleshooting. Okay, okay. Thank uh, you. Uh, yeah. you show the uh, lab topology you have got. I just want to check uh, whether you have the uh, lab topology matching close to close to any life scenarios. Yes, sir. So like uh, our lab topologies, uh, so like, you know, it's very much, you know, like similar to the, you know, uh, live scenarios or the uh, live, you know, like setups, because see, we we have seen that every, you know, like client or account has, you know, like at least two data center, right? Mm -hmm. Two, a bare minimum they have two. And, uh, you know, like uh, GTM, uh, you know, like deployment is very different, or sorry, very common uh, for, uh, you know, like uh, for all the accounts or all the clients, right? So. GTMs are basically act in active, active, uh, as far as I have seen, everywhere. Okay, I have, you know, like helped or deployed or migrated, you know, like for 20 plus accounts and everywhere I have seen a GTM in active, active across the data centers. Okay, so it's very much, you know, like similar to the uh, a live uh, you know, setup and all. Yeah, the, the reason why I was asking is this. Uh, yeah. For example, if there is any publicly available website which is load balanced mm -hmm. by the F5, mm -hmm. the request comes to the corporate DNS server first, and then there they point it to the GTM, and then GTM decides where it's right. first to. Correct. Is that how your lab topology like? Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, we will. Uh, um, I would not say 100 percent because we are not going to use public IP, but I will simulate you know like 90 percent of the thing. 
that you are accessing it it will come to your local dns local dns will send it to the you know gtm okay and gtm will give you the results so so in the lab it will be like uh, from the client machine uh, whatever client machine you are going to use from there yeah. it has to go to your uh, the edge of the those two dcs which can be your router or anything and then from there one of your locally created dns servers linux yeah. or anything else and right. then uh, those linux server will point it to your gtm then the, so uh, that way we can do also we can that's what we call delegation mode uh, if linux is pointing to the gtm it's a linux if not we will directly configure gtm as a ldns on the client machine so whenever you type something and we have created some records on the gtm it will get resolved through the gtm client will send a query to the gtm gtm will resolve it uh, another scenario is that client will send query to the ldns ldls will send query to the gtm and gtm will resolve it so those kind of uh, things we will cover in the lab okay. <clears throat> any questions other questions guys Hemu, can you just flash that screen again? The you know, like the contact details, so that guys can take the screenshot or like uh, other note that note that down. <laughs> okay, let me do that. Guys, speak up. It's your time. You can ask any question, be it relevant, irrelevant, anything. So, how many classes will take to complete all of these? Uh, as I told you, like it's six to uh, seven weekends, approx to twenty six hours. So, but if it's getting you know like delayed with some any reason, uh, we will stretch it. But uh, hopefully, you know like not more than seven, six to seven or eight uh, weekends, only but weekends. Saturday Sundays, right? Saturday Sundays. And not timings, weekends. it will be. Uh, it will be more, uh, you know, like uh, one p.m. or two p.m. IST till four. Till four. Okay. Okay, right. because I have to make some arrangements. Yeah, some again, time. right. So, okay. but you know, at times, uh, if I am not available for some weekends, uh, I'll uh, intimate you all that today is not not no class or uh, we are scheduling it for any reasons. Okay. Okay. No mind. No mind. Okay. That will and be will, intimated. There will be yeah. there will be video recording. Let's say if I miss any class. Yeah, so, yeah we'll we'll record that for sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, fine. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. So, L team also going to take by you, Asif, or anyone else? Uh, as of now, I am one, but we have you know like team of you know like uh, trainers. So, uh, if I am free, if I have time from the DNS and other stuff, I'll certainly. Else, what I can do, I'll you know once I'll finish L team, then I'll start D DNS or vice versa. Depends on the you know like the enrollments. Who is enrolling for which module? Accordingly, we'll start the batch. As if I understand, today was an introductory class, and yeah. a lot of people have different, you know, background. And now I think right. everyone is clear. But moving forward, it will be kind of structured, right? That means we have a topic, we cover the topic, ask yeah. relevant questions, and yeah, and close it, right? Okay, okay. Like this. So here, so suppose uh, initially, uh, uh, you know, we will introduce uh, basically set up the big IP, your system, right? Once you have the those system set up. Uh, I'll stop there. I will dedicate some time, like half an hour, 45 minutes, that anybody is having any problem. If somebody has problem setting up their lab, we will take that individually after the class. Okay, because we cannot uh, wait. Uh, we cannot make uh, all other, you know, like participants wait for troubleshooting of uh, individual lab, right? So that thing will be there. And for uh, after each topic, we will perform the lab. Okay. For which we have the labs, and uh, then I'll take the queries. It will like that. It's not like that. Okay, I'll stop you right there. But I'll take. Uh, I'll pick up a topic. I will complete it. Then only you will uh, have to ask the question. Otherwise, if you ask in between, then um, the, you know that topic will be you know like not covered in a proper way. Absolutely. So, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So if you have any quiz in between the topics, you just write it down or put it in chat. And the moment I'll complete the topic or chapter, I will take it. OK. Because as you all are aware that we have only two hours, right? So two hours is very, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, 
tight for you know take everything like the trouble shooting the question <laughs> and the classes and so i have seen that you know like uh, somebody ask a question irrelevant and i i you know like i swerve myself from the topic and then somebody uh, you know like told me uh, tell me okay as if uh, you are dev- uh, you know <laughs> deviating from the topic so i have to you know bring myself back to the you know the main topic so this happens a lot but i request everyone that who server is joining bear with me okay you are not going unanswered anywhere okay so if you have any queries just write it down or put it in chat we will take it okay fine i think i'm good uh, i will talk to vandit for the enrollment yes thanks yeah please thank you okay uh, can i top off i have uh... Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So just <laughs> okay. about the. If anybody has any question, then okay. If not, then we can wrap it up. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Asif. Hello. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Asif. Hello. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. I'm listening. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Is there is there any LTM training scheduled for the future? Because you told me that uh, this is the scratch. Yeah, we are certainly yeah. start looking. At- correct so yeah we so do have the- ltm courses but again like you know uh, we will uh, we are planning an introduction for that also so uh, we will intimate you just keep in touch with you know uh, with it or the numbers on the screen uh, you will get to know when we are having a ltm course started okay <laughs> any co- question if not then we can and we also provide palo alto okay trainings palo alto f5 cloud and combo also so as you can seeing at the screen we are currently running an offer for you know if you want to learn palo alto f5 we can do it in a you no know, like as a bundle course and so you guys have uh, noted on my email id the both email ids or do you want me to share the screen again and this is our you know like uh, site crnets.com so you can check there also <laughs> so uh, i take this as a no nobody has any question all right so uh, seven minutes we have so you can ask guys if you have any question please uh, or any Pravin. doubt or any query yeah uh, hi uh, sik pravin here so yeah, you uh, you show me the combo for that's only for recorded videos right not for live sessions so for recorded let video me, let me tell you here so this particular yeah. combo offer is for the live training it is not for the recorded videos okay and that batch we are starting from 31st of july okay 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 thanks so once you have uh, enrolled for the live classes okay uh, you will get the recordings also mm, okay okay good thanks sir. On 31st of July, we'll start for with uh, from LTM. It's GTM and uh, Palo Alto, and uh, so guys, again, like whosoever wants to enroll for LTM courses, uh, reach out to that number. Okay, and accordingly, we will start the co- uh, course. If we have like you know 10 to more than 10 students for LTM, we will uh, kick start it. you know like by the end of this month or first of, first week of the month okay so again uh, that's number is very important write it down okay so there are so many things going on so and so many batches are still running so if we get a good amount of student or, or attendees then we can start it, uh, you know like early so those who don't know ltm i would say please uh, go for ltm first then for gtm okay so ltm is very important 
for F5 or for learning any modules. Uh, that's our, you know, like uh, YouTube, you know, like channel. Uh, if you want to check it out, you can go there. And, you know, like there are so many videos, pre-uploaded videos there. And, uh, you know, the other things like, you know, like the interview questions and all we have, you know, like uh, started. So I would say just go to that. So can you paste the, you know, channel uh, URL to the chat? Hemu? Yeah, we will share in our groups, okay? I think I hope okay, just share the part group. of our WhatsApp groups. I will share over there. Right, great. Not an issue. Any other question, guys? So go ahead, fire up. So if not, then we are, you know, just closing the meeting and we'll see you in the live classes. We can go to close. Thank you everyone for joining. Thanks everyone. Session. Thanks for Thanks joining. Everyone. Take care guys. Have a nice day ahead. Bye-bye.